Did you know? Star Fox grew from a prototype originally designed by Argonaut Games for NES. Its codename was NES Glider, inspired by Argonaut's previous game for Atari ST and Amiga, Star Glider. After showing the game to Nintendo, first on the NES and then a few weeks later on the Super Nintendo, Argonaut founder Jesson told the Japanese developer that their prototype was the best 3D work that could be done without a custom chipset. Impressed by the work that they had so far, Nintendo gave Argonaut the go-ahead to develop the chipset they needed. The result of their endeavors was the Super FX chip, with Star Fox being the first game designed around it. Shigeru Miyamoto and Katsuya Aguchi were tasked with designing the core gameplay for Star Fox. The series' anthropomorphic animals stemmed from Miyamoto's lack of interest in franchises with traditional humans and realistic sci-fi stories. The concept of having a fox as the main character and the idea of flying through rings came from Miyamoto visiting the shrine of Fushimi Inari Taisha, which was located near Nintendo of Japan's headquarters. The Inari is a Japanese deity that's often depicted as a fox, and its shrines typically have many arches to walk through, similar to obstacles found in the Star Fox series. Two other characters, Falco Lombardi and Peppy Hare, are likewise said to be inspired by Japanese folklore, though the game's developers haven't specified which myths they're based on. The personalities of the four members of the Star Fox team are roughly based on a few of the game's developers. A Miyamoto is Fox, the game's 3D model designer Tsuyoshi Watanabe is Falco, Slippy is assistant director Yoichi Yamada, and Peppy is game director Katsuya Eguchi. The character Pigma Dengar was once part of the Star Fox team, but left to join Star Wolf. Pigma's family name, Dengar, is a reference to the Kansai dialect of Japan. In Kansai, people have a quirk where they often end their sentences with the word Dengar. It's also possible that the character General Pepper is a reference to the Beatles album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. As well as the obvious use of the word Pepper, sergeants and generals are both ranks used in military forces, and General Pepper wears an outfit very similar to the one George Harrison wore on the cover of the album. The character Rob64 is called NUS-64 in Japan, a reference to the Nintendo Ultra 64, the original name given to the Nintendo 64 console. In Europe, Star Fox was renamed to Starwing due to the similarity in pronunciation to the German company Starvox. Later titles would also lose the Star Fox moniker in Europe, including Star Fox 64, which was titled Lilat Wars. As part of the game's marketing campaign, Nintendo released a promotional cartridge titled Super Star Fox Weekend, official competition, that was showcased in malls and game retailers across the US and Europe. It featured a time attack of three levels, a shortened version of the Corneria and Asteroid stages, and a bonus level made specifically for the cartridge. The contest ran from April 30th to May 2nd in 1993, and prizes included jackets, t-shirts, and trips to international locations. After the competition, a limited number of cartridges were made available for purchase in Nintendo Power's 1994 Super Power Supply catalog. Star Fox was a breakout success, selling almost 3 million copies during its publishing run. Nintendo's confidence in the sales potential of the new IP led them stockpiling an unprecedented 1.7 million carts ready for launch. A work on a sequel simply titled Star Fox 2 started three days before the original game's Japanese release on February 16, 1993. Star Fox 2 was meant to take the series forward in every way, mixing the familiar on-rail shooting aspect with the new 3D motion sequences. This game was unlike anything that had been seen on the Super Nintendo. The game was meant to use an upgraded version of the Super FX chip, aptly named the Super FX 2. This allowed the developers to concentrate on eliminating problems that had plagued the first game, such as lack of textures and slowdown. Star Fox 2 initially also featured multiplayer, but multiplayer was left out in later builds of the game. The primary villain was again Andros, but this time around, there wasn't any static level progression. Instead, there was a strategic map mode where you plotted your course. When you moved, enemy units moved, and this brought a degree of urgency into the game. You had to fight towards Andros while still protecting Cornelius area from an onslaught of missiles, capital ships, and fighters. There were also three difficulty levels, which would increase or decrease your objectives depending on which you chose. Unfortunately, with the release of the Nintendo 64 quickly approaching, Shigeru Miyamoto decided that he wanted there to be a clean break between 3D games for the Super Nintendo and 3D games for the N64. That said, the Nintendo 64 was delayed by around a year. Star Fox 2 would
would have been able to release over a year earlier than the 64-bit system, and it's possible that Nintendo simply didn't want to compete with the far superior 3D visuals capable on the PlayStation. According to the date on the final Star Fox 2 beta ROM that was leaked online, the game was completed on June 22, 1995. The game was quietly cancelled, and many of its innovations went on to be featured in Star Fox 64. Star Fox 2 developer Dylan Cuthbert even developed a 3D platforming prototype for the game, which Shigeru Miyamoto showed great interest in. In fact, it's often speculated that Cuthbert's prototypes influenced the direction of Super Mario 64. In an interview with Nintendo Life, Cuthbert said, Some of the platforming experience we did definitely gave Miyamoto the confidence he needed. At one point, we had slopes and rotating platforms, switches and things that really did feel like Mario in 3D. Star Fox 64 was released in the third quarter of 1997 to critical acclaim. It is not a direct sequel to the first game. Instead, it's a reimagining of the original Star Fox. It was the first game for the Nintendo 64 to support the Rumble Pack, and the first wave of stock were packaged with one, resulting in one of the more unique Nintendo 64 game boxes. This game features full voice acting, and as a nod to Shigeru Miyamoto's love for marionette dramas such as the British TV show Thunderbirds, the animators had the characters' mouths pop open and close like a puppet. To promote the game, Nintendo Power subscribers received a VHS tape that advertised several of the game's key features, such as the Rumble Pack support and the voice acting. The information was presented through a skit in which Nintendo's key rivals, Sony and Sega, kidnapped Nintendo employees and extorted information from them by electrocuting Mario. Also worth noting is that when Peppy tells you to perform a barrel roll in Star Fox 64, he's actually referring to a maneuver called an aileron roll. Doing a barrel roll in Star Fox 64 is impossible. If you'd like to continue learning more about the creative backstory of the Star Fox series, check out my video case study on the Star Fox series and user experience. And if you missed the announcement, check out Did You Know Movies. It's just like Did You Know Gaming, but for films and TV shows. 